so what I really want to talk about is how management in many large companies can appear to hate Excel. I mean, we're here, Excel conference, I assume we all love it. And if you don't love it, at least it's part of your job and you're using it every day and you know the benefits that it can deliver. And at the same time, our users love using it. You take someone's Excel away, uh, probably the second most thing, taking email away, people hate it. And yet, certainly we see a lot of projects in our large clients that are explicitly called Kill Excel. And you kind of the question I want to really talk about is, so um, what is it that people hate? Why do they want to kill Excel? So um, I want to think about Excel haters understand them a bit, and then see what we can do to convert them to our way of thinking. So um, what I'm trying to do is to answer the question, if users love Excel so much, why does management seem to spend so much time trying to kill it? Um, and when we've thought about why, what can we do about it? And um, that's what I'm going to do. Before I get into um, that, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Leslie Spiro. I'm the CEO of Tick42. Tick42 is a Bulgarian software house. Clearly, I'm not Bulgarian, but almost every <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a great accent. Almost everybody uh, in the business uh, in the company is, and we have about 60 developers uh, in Sofia. Uh, and as a company, we tend to work on project stuff for large enterprises uh, and major data vendors, particularly uh, investment banks, but not exclusively. Um, we're active in open source. We uh, work with OpenMama, which is hosted by the Linux Foundation, which is a market data thing. We provide Reuters and Bloomberg bridges. And we work with Symphony, which is an enterprise chat company, which um, is very interesting because it's got very tight security between companies. So a very kind of controlled way. Um, all the encryption occurs inside the enterprises. So it's got a lot of traction in investment banks, but I think it could be quite interesting for those of us who have who are looking in enterprises for conversations between companies, but not here to talk about Symfony. Um, I'm here to talk about Glue42, which is um, our desktop interop product. But in particular, I want to kind of look at this thing about why there are so many kill Excel projects and, and, and uh, kind of consider going forward from there. Um, just a quick statistic about Glue42. It's live at two clients, and we have over 15,000 desktops using it, and we're doing a public launch in January. So what I'm going to talk about is a real problem. I'm not going to talk about uh, Glue42. I'm going to talk about a real problem and then at the very end I'll show how Glue42 is one approach of many to actually try and address the issues. Um, and it's a short talk, 20 minutes, and I think we're out for lunch. So um, I probably can deliver this in about 15 and uh, take some questions and you can get your lunch. So I might be able to give you back a few minutes of your day. Um, so the first thing to state is if we think of management as Excel haters, that means we have to think of them as hypocrites because they all use it. And yet they commission these kill Excel projects. And it's important for us who kind of understand why Excel is great to, think, to see that what they're talking about is not unreasonable. So why do management hate Excel or appear to hate Excel? And the first question is, where is the data stored? Right, the data stored in an XLS. Where's the XLS? I can copy the XLS. I can send an email. I can store it in SharePoint. I can store it in GitHub. I can do what I like with it. And so, actually, where is the data stored? You go lots of places. The last time I touched it, it was here. But actually, now, don't know. And they hate that because Excel is important. The people using Excel are running real businesses. And the stuff, the data contained in XLSs is incredibly important. There are solutions out there that do a mass index of all these spreadsheets on the network and try and provide you with workflow and uh, version reconciliation. And I understand why they do that product. We think it's misplaced. But anyway, that's one approach. So one thing they hate is they never know where the current version is. Second thing they hate is who's got the latest version, right? <laughs> is it my, I'm working in, uh, on my laptop, that's that latest version, maybe someone's changed it since. It's a big problem for them because the XLS is not really a very corporate format. Obviously, Microsoft Excel is used pr overwhelmingly in enterprises, but as a format, it's a kind of pain. Um, data validation. Well, sometimes, you know, there are cases of people preparing quotes, or uh, proposals in Excel, they don't do the right conversion. Somebody puts in a dollar and it should have been a euro and then they're $10 million down. You know, data validation 
is a really important thing, and it's very hard to enforce it, right? We all know how to write add-ins. We all know how to write, well, many of us know how to write add-ins. Many of us know how to write VBA macros. It's still very hard to enforce. And so this kind of centralized and audited, right? Compliance, regulatory, audit stuff. Those are important things that um, need to happen to data when it's, when it's important data. I mean, obviously, the use of Excel as a scratch pad, as a what if, fantastic. But there's also Excel usage for real business uh, documents that have real business impact that we deliver on their contracts to clients, and that validation has to be ensured. And um, also, you've got no control over who's allowed to see it. I'm doing a proposal for a large company who's um, allowed to see it. Well, maybe I don't want everybody in my organization to see it. And I've got no control over that. Um, and there's no audit trail for changes. Yeah, the version goes out. The price is wrong. Who changed it? I'm doing a search for the guilty. And you've got no idea, right? And people like an audit trail. And so management see this list of things. And they think, ah, I know how to solve this. I want a central server with a database or whatever. And I've got all these things. I know where it's stored. I've got version control. I can enforce visibility through the REST services and everything else. And I've got an audit trail. And therefore, you end up with a kill Excel project. And really, what we need to understand is every time we hear management saying, I need to move this data out of Excel, they don't really mean I need to move, I, I need to stop my users looking at this data in Excel. What they really mean is I need to stop storing this data in an XLS file. And the way that they think about that is replacing the Excel sheet with an application. So we've all been there where you produce an application in Excel using whatever enhancement technologies you want. It's fantastic. The UI is brilliant. It's able to bring data in from everywhere. It's exactly what the user wants. And they go, great, you've specified the application. And we get the devs, the central devs, they'll go away and they'll produce an application that does the same thing. And of course, what they deliver is just pathetic from an Excel user's point of view. It's a grid. It doesn't connect to anything. It's got no what-if capabilities. And you end up in this incredibly depressing, your users end up in this incredibly depressing scenario where they're arguing desperately with the developers, can't you make it a little bit more like Excel? And the answer is not really. I mean, some of the grids are OK. Some of them might replicate Excel keystrokes. But it's not the same. It's just not the same for dozens and dozens of reasons. And so my message to you is that as Excel developers, you need, we're focused on the front end. And the user experience, and what's the UI like, and what data can I bring in to support the data. And I'm suggesting that we will help our users if we start to think a bit more about the data storage mechanism. And so in that respect, um, we tend not to think of the data storage. We go, it's an XLS, and um, that's all we really want to get involved in. And, there, and I'm saying that if we want to keep Excel at the heart of the user interaction, which is what most of our users want, we need to start taking some responsibility for how the data is stored. Um, and that's really the kind of key of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and we talk about and it, and it needn't be that hard, and there are ways to do it. And uh, obviously, we, we, we'll, I'll demo at least one of them. So um, what does taking control of data storage mean? It means XLS, not XLSs. It's no good saying I'll store it in SharePoint, right? SharePoint, nice product if it's well configured and you've got the permissions sorted out and you've got network access. I mean, it's, it's fine, right? It's, it's not like Confluence is any better. So, um, but it has its own problems. And even when you put it there, it's not a solution. I download it from Excel. I go and work offline. I'm on a flight. Maybe I upload it to Excel, uh, to SharePoint. Maybe I don't. I, I, storing the XLS in SharePoint or in a database is not the answer. Um, the key message that we have is that when you look at an Excel spreadsheet, it's full of data. And it's no good trying to say, I want a storage model in the back end that lets me store the entire XLS. Yet the key thing that we're saying is for these spreadsheets that are corporate resources, that are kind of you're going to do a quote on, you're going to look at something, you need to identify which bit is the corporate data and which bit is the Excel. 
pieces. So I might have a, um, we'll show you know, a, a, a proposal, list of items with prices. I might have lots of sheets doing lookups and currency conversions and currency rates. Um, but those aren't the core data. Right? The core data is quite a simple table. And often that core data is really basically a grid of products, quantities, and prices, or something like that, or people and roles, or people and salaries and bonuses, something that we're doing <laughs> at the moment. Um, so the key thing that you need to do is to then choose which subset of data represents the corporate, the core data, and to think then about how you're going to manage that data. Um, and then when that, then you need to be able to store it centrally, and this is typically going to look like a, uh, um, a Java server sitting on some kind of database with a REST interface. So typically that involves, that will be some involvement with development. But your involvement doesn't have to be give the whole project over to them. It'd be much better to engage with them and say, this is the data service I need. And um, let them provide that. Let them define the validation together with you and the users. Let them sort out visibility control, who's allowed to see what, who's allowed to change what, the basic things you do for any corporate data, and what kind of audit uh, trail you need from the data. Um, and then, um, if you've done that, that's what management want. They don't really want to kill Excel. What they want is control of the key data that, um, that is used in these business critical um, spreadsheets. And so if nothing else, uh, that's the message I'd really like you to take away. That people talk about killing Excel, but they don't really mean it. What they mean is, I want control over the data. And, um, and particularly around validation who's allowed to see it, and, and logging changes. And, and that doesn't necessarily require a big change, and it doesn't require you to store the XLS in the back-end database. That's the, those are the key messages that I think are generally applicable for any of you who are doing that kind of Excel project. Right, the, the project that you just saw before, the modeling piece, doesn't apply here. Right? The model is it's primarily a what-if, the, the model, the complexity, I'm not, th what I'm talking about doesn't apply here. The, I'll show you some examples where it does. And we've all seen those kind of things, particularly for business critical spreadsheets that often have grids of people or products or prices, that kind of stuff. So I'm not saying everything should look like this, but I'm saying there's a very important set of applications that you produce that management are trying to kill, and, they don't, and the, it's silly. It's wasteful, makes your users unhappy, and um, there's no requirement for it. So um, I'm going to talk about, I'm um, from Tick42. We have a product called Glue42. Um, and yes, the 42 is uh, Douglas Adams, uh, uh, Life of the Universe, Hitchhiker's Guide reference. And um, Glue42 is um, a desktop interop product. And I'm going to show a demo of that's a way to do it. But don't think of this, as on, this talk only as a product pitch. The, the problem that I've identified is a real problem and that we should really address. And there are lots of ways of um, dealing with this through add-ins, through VBA, through whatever. But actually, I'm going to show you a nice solution that we think could make your lives a lot easier. So um, I'm not going to go through Glue42 in any detail. It's a desktop interop product, and it allows web apps and desktop apps to work together. And um, uh, towards the end, I'll also show how this is really just yet another occurrence of this idea. And it's been tried before and uh, some with varying success. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so you've got 10 more minutes to go, and uh, <laughs> I should, we should be done. So um, let me just show the demo piece now very quickly. Um, or not, as the case may be. Um, so, as I said before, many of our um, clients are large investment banks. Okay, let's try that and so that you can share in the glory of the Glue42 demo. Um, <laughs> well, there you go, it was working. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. 
Nice. Um, let me try. Right. Good. So many of our clients are uh, financial services and investment banks. And this is a simple web application that shows a list of clients and their portfolio values. And when I click in here, uh, so this is after I've then got um, my portfolio opens up. And here I can see a client's stocks and all that kind of stuff. And this is the classic result of after they've done Kill Excel. So um, here we've taken something which is a grid and we're showing the grid and maybe we'll allow them to edit the number of shares or whatever. But there's not a lot as an Excel user. If I'm used to working with Excel and maybe I have connections to um, research information about these things or the current price or whether there's any news about that company, m much of which I can get into Excel. This is really piss poor, actually. I mean, fine, it's a grid and it's got the price and the number of shares, which is the key data. So that's the management data. But actually working with it in um, a grid is really a waste because what I really want to do is to um, work with it in Excel. And um, at the click of a button, I get a uh, template opened with the data in Excel. Um, and this has taken a template, and it's taken the um, core data um, and patched it into the Excel sheet. And um, I can then have whatever visualizations that I want. So the idea is that the data itself is managed by a web application. Sorry? The data, the data itself is, I will take questions, but ideally not in the middle of the uh, presentation. The data is in the Excel spreadsheet, and um, I've got a web application that is um, managing that data. And what's really important is that it's a real-time two-way data change. So if I change the number of Netflix shares I'm holding to minus two, then what you see is that the actual validation happened in the web application. And that means the web application received the data change validated it against the server held rules and sent an error back to Excel. And then you'll notice you can choose whether you want um, a list of errors in the spreadsheet or you just want to use tool um, tabs. But the actual user's focus remains in the spreadsheet. And so if I fix it and said, no, of course not, Netflix, big fan, going to buy a load of it, then that's gone back. It's been validated and it's saved. So the key message in that interaction is that the user is working with the data in Excel exactly as if it was on a sheet, but when they go save or they change it, it's not saved to an XLS, it's saved to the server. And with that technique of being able to take an application.NET web app and um, use that as the owner of the data, as your access mechanism to the data, and then um, but keeping the user interface, the user interaction with the data in Excel, we think you can have the best of both worlds really easily. And this is like, uh, I think, 10 lines of JavaScript or whatever to put it in, and you load an Excel add-in to support it. Um, and so that is a way in which you can move um, management of the data, control of the data, away from the Excel spreadsheet, out into a server with the full set of... Um, data processing controls that management want. Incredibly easy. And this spreadsheet, you carry on working using the skills you have and giving the users the experience they want. And that's our message. So that um, take some responsibility of moving the data somewhere else using a tool like Glue42 or something else. And you can continue to work with your users in Excel and keep that as their primary user interface. And of course, one thing to say is that um, as much as computers are a wonderful thing, and desktops are a wonderful thing, and multiple screens are a wonderful thing, we all know that we all work on phones, and we all work on um, tablets, and Excel is different versions, different skill, different uh, capabilities. And so it also means that when I'm running in my web application, if I'm running on a tablet or a phone without Excel available, I can, I've got a web viewer available as a fallback interface. So it also gives a added value. You get the full richness of the UI in Excel, um, and you fall back to a web interface when you're on a, a non-PC device. And so that is how you stop management launching these really rather stupid, uh, harmful projects for Kill Excel, 
because they don't really want to kill Excel. What they want to do is get control of their data. Um, and so, moving back, that's a shame. Um, so those of you of a certain age, um, this may look a bit familiar to some of you because um, Microsoft about 20 years ago launched Olay, object linking and embedding, and it was a remarkable product, but the key point from here was I could have my data in Excel, I could open it in Word, and this was going to be a live sp spreadsheet link in much the same way um, that I just showed here with the web app to Excel. And Olay promised a huge range of features. It was incredibly ambitious and complicated, and um, it failed miserably. <laughs> so actually, the demos were stunning. And if you ever try to deliver any of this stuff, it's just hopeless, right? The machines weren't powerful enough, and they'd over-delivered and everything else. And so this is one example where they share, we have the same vision, <laughs> and it failed. So uh, just having a vision is not enough. You have to have a delivery. But the important thing to bear in mind is not just how much of a failure Olay was, but there was one small part of it, which was VBA and COM. And in the end, Microsoft threw away all the Olay stuff. I mean, it's still there if you actually look at all the clipboard formats, but then it's not used. But VBA COM, hugely important thing, right? Because good designs persist. There's a story in the UK that says the gauge of our railway line, the width of the rails, is driven by the length of a Roman legionnaire spear. I don't know if it's true, but there was a whole story about why that should be the case. Um, so that's a design that two th persisted for 2,000 years. Um, there's this quote I love, the past is never dead, it's not even past. And so 20 years later, in Tick 42, we write VBA, we write COM add-ins, 20 years after Olay failed, but this was c rose from the ashes. And so um, the point is that uh, this idea of scriptable cooperating applications is a very important part of what we do. And what Glue42 does is just allow you to expand the range of applications, particularly to web applications that can participate in this. So we also write lots and lots of JavaScript, and because it's our product, we tie them together with Glue42. Um, so Glue42 is we have a couple of things, VBA com for the 21st century. We say that primarily because we support JavaScript, and JavaScript is becoming the dominant language. Uh, and if you look at the new uh, Excel add-in mod models, which are obviously restricted compared to the .NET and C++ ones, you can see that that's definitely the case, even in the Excel world. Uh, we sometimes talk about it as a desktop service bus, about UIs rather than an enterprise service bus for workflows. Um, and we also like to talk about it as a way for you to make your users happier. Um, and that's not a negative, that's not like a stupid thing to be talking about in a business environment, right? Happy users, there's lots of benefits from happy users. Um, and why not spread a bit of happiness in the world when we do our work? So, um, and it's not just for Excel, we support connectors to all sorts of other things. Um, we've got a stand outside, so if any of this is of interest to you, do come and talk to us. Um, there you go, no more kill Excel projects, make your users happy, nice smiley face. And that's the second part of my message, which is the kind of commercial part. Um, the, we're starting an office beta program, and so if you're interested, either talk to us outside or send us an email, and um, there are all sorts of deployment models and options, but uh, it's an interesting product. So, um, any, thank you very much for your time. We've got a few minutes if you want. <laughs> Thanks. Um, if any of you have any comments or questions or just they want to say something like, well, this is rubbish or this is a great idea, what about using X or Y, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, you can get to lunch three minutes early. Anybody got any questions? Good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, get two rounds of applause, right? <laughs>